I'm not gonna lie, I really bought this book because I like I thought the cover was really cool, and, and reading the description kind of reminded me of that show, The uh, Path, which I really like. And it kind of like that, but it plays out very differently, and I was kind of disappointed in the end. Hello, Story Knights, and for today I have a review for a book called Paradise Court Number One. This is part of a five issue miniseries, or limited series, whatever, and it is. An independent book basically centered around two couples that are on a cross-country road trip for spring break yeah I know sounds really generic so far it, it pretty much is uh, and basically they're uh, they go to visit one of the one of the girls is a old friend from high school that's on the way there and it's in this gated community but it just so happens that there's some weird disappearings of, of you know missing people is happening around that area and things happen and it basically plays out very much like a uh, horror movie from like the 70s or 80s and that's what kind of what it basically is even the dialogue feels very like that um, the book starts off with uh, this woman going jogging she's uh well not jogging but she's out at night with supposed to be with her friend looking trying to bust this guy who's the local peeping Tom creep of the neighborhood they're trying to, I guess, catch him in the act of doing something or whatever. And the friend never shows up. And the woman ends up getting attacked by this mysterious, creepy, cult-looking guy with, you know, bone mask and a big knife. And it's really cool. I mean, it looks visually, it looks great. Like, the book is actually drawn very well. And that's probably the best thing about the book is the art by a, by a mile. Is the art's actually pretty good. It's definitely my style that I like to look at when I'm reading books. Um... But that's about the only thing really going for this book is the art. The worst thing the book has going for it is the dialogue. The dialogue is just not good here. It's uh, it's really cringy. It's uh, very um, a lot of it's very overly overly sexualized and stereotypical of the with these characters. Like for example, there's one one of the girlfriends is just so like stereotypical of the classic 80s screen queen slut that you know is going to end up getting killed. Then you have her boyfriend who's kind of like the classic stoner, you know, goofball guy. And then you have the other couple that are more level-headed, more, I guess you could say normal, you know, average people. The girl's more of a kind of, kind of gives off a, uh, you know, more timid bookworm kind of, you know, character arc. And it's just, it's funny how all the characters are so, so one-dimensional that you can put them into these stereotypical cliche archetypes uh, so I didn't like that and the, the book just use, overuses sexual, sexuality way too much in, in its storytelling and it just kind of comes off as it cheap you know very cheap to me then you have the peeping Tom character Barry who the first time we see him in the book he is masturbating to to the to the two girls at, at the pool which is just <laughs> interesting way to introduce a character uh at least that's what they they try to elude that he's doing you can't really see it but you just see him with no shirt on his hand underneath something that you can't see so it kind of basically what it looks like and uh his character is kind of creepy like you know like they, they keep playing him off as just this creep you know weird guy and and he keeps saying things like don't go in there it's dangerous when he's when it's just him and that girl and it just this the book is way too much trying to put emphasis on that he's a bad guy which which I know is probably just a misdirect and he's actually just trying to help people because he probably knows that there's something more really really bad going on and is trying to warn them in his own weird way you, that's the impression I get that he's basically that kind of uh, scapegoat character you know that's the misdirect character because uh, there's even look at this panel he's got a snake on a, a silver snake head on a uh, on a knife and he's telling the girl not to go in this cave because bet because just full of snakes or whatever. I mean that's totally a misdirect, you know. But uh, yeah, so I can't really recommend this book. It's I like I said the art's gorgeous, pretty well done, but overall the book's just not that great. Storytelling wise, I want to give this book a one, you know, as a score. But the art is pretty really good, and art is a big part of you know of comic books. So I will bump it up to a two. But uh, you know, it's not still not saying a whole lot. But yeah, there, yeah, guys, that's my review for Paradise Court number one, part of five comics issue series. 
And uh, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned and see you guys later.